What's up everybody, Josh Aarons here with the Israel Collective and today I want to tell you about the Garden of Gethsemane. This is one of the most significant biblical locations to us as Christians. It's also a beautiful place that you can still visit in Israel today. The Garden of Gethsemane is a beautiful grove of olive trees and it's actually on the hillside of the Mount of Olives, which is a mountain that's just on the outside of the city walls of Jerusalem and from here you can see the entire city. The Bible tells us that Jesus was making his way into Jerusalem and that his followers were shouting Hosanna, which means save us, while they waved palm fronds as he rode a colt into the city. Jesus pauses on the Mount of Olives to weep over Jerusalem because he knows that in 70 AD, not long after this time, that Jerusalem would actually be destroyed. And as he continues into Jerusalem, he knows that a series of events are going to unfold where he's going to have to endure very extreme suffering and yet he's doing this to bring salvation to the world through his crucifixion and resurrection that's what we believe as christians and so the bible says that the garden of gethsemane was somewhere that jesus came to often after his days of ministry and teaching and healing and casting out demons and he would come to the garden of gethsemane to pray and so on this particular night jesus makes his way to the garden of gethsemane and he knows this is the night that he's going to be betrayed and arrested and ultimately crucified. So he knows the suffering that he's about to undergo. And we have to remember that Jesus was fully divine and he was also fully human. So he was experiencing the feelings and the pressure and the stress and the agony that we would feel in the same situation, knowing the suffering we were about to endure. And then he withdraws from the disciples about a stone's throw away, the Bible tells us, and he begins to pray. And the Bible says he's experiencing such agony that his sweat falls like drops of blood. He says, if it's possible, take this cup from me, take this suffering from me. And then he says something else. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Meaning at that moment, Jesus decides to take on the suffering, the suffering of the world, and ultimately defeat death and bring salvation to the world. And that was for you and for me. And if you go forward just a little bit, Paul is talking to new believers in Jesus. This is just after the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the early church is developing. And the symbol that Paul uses to tell new believers how this all works is the olive tree. And so Paul says that the trunk of the tree is like the original covenant that God made with Abraham and that new believers like us are like wild olive branches that are grafted in to that original promise that God made to Abraham. And we know that God keeps his promises because in the Bible he promises to rebuild Jerusalem and to bring the Jewish people back to Jerusalem. And even though the Romans destroyed it in 70 AD, that's something you can see today firsthand because today you can stand in the Jerusalem, Israel, in the Garden of Gethsemane, celebrating what Jesus did for us with your fellow Christian believers in the modern state of Israel. I'm Josh Aarons, director of the Israel Collective, and that's another reason the Bible is real.